Hi, this is Les Levine, the self-proclaimed voice of truth and reason in Ohio sports. So today I go to the bank, I go to the cleaners, I go to the gym, I go to the post office. Everybody thinks I know exactly what happened yesterday with the Cleveland Browns. But more importantly, they know that I can make necessary moves uh, to get this thing on the right track, and I can tell the right people to get it done. Well, if you thought the Browns would be 10-6 and six, like I did, that's what a loss looks like. It's only one game. Even if they go 10-6 and six this year, uh, relax. It's still a 30-point loss one way or the other. Oh, yeah. Did you watch the Steelers last night? 33-3, final score. That sounds like a 30-point blowout to them also. You think their fans are upset and don't think they'll ever win a game again? I doubt it. On the other hand, I hope that's exactly what happens to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Jim Ingram is here. More sports and Les Levine is on the air. From the worldwide headquarters of More Sports and Less Levine, it's a, a Monday night, a brand new week. Good evening, everyone. Welcome once again to More Sports and Less Levine into its 24th consecutive year and exclusively seen on Cleveland.com. Jim Ingram is here uh, to regale us with what happened yesterday. <laughs> Start we, regaling. We could use some regaling. Yes, <laughs> galing and regaling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I don't have answers. You must. So somebody does, and it must be you. Well, I mean, they, it's not like they lost by 40 points, right? Right. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I don't know that anybody expected what happened, especially after the first drive, the um, when they just went right down the field and looked like everyone imagined they would look. Right. And right. then, but that was the high point of the day, and then the rest of it was mostly just the referees picking up their flags. And correctly, by the way, is yeah. there any problem with any calls? There's there's a new rule we didn't know about. We learned about it yesterday. Yeah. But 18, 18 uh, uh, penalties, and. Uh, a couple that were declined, or two on the same play. So two on the same play. That was my favorite one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like that's you, a category. Your favorite call. You, you give the opponent. Uh, uh, you give the opponent their choice of. It's like the which order fifteen of yards. Choice. You know, which one would you prefer? Right. You know, they, they go, and uh, that one is declined. Everybody goes, yay, yay, <laughs> but the next one is not. So. Yeah, that's like the old Casey Stengel story where uh, when he was with the Mets and the, Marv Thronberry got thrown out, uh, he got called out for missing second base, right. and he, in case you went out to argue it, and one of the umpires said, save your breath, Casey, he missed first base, too. <laughs> so we just called him out <laughs> yeah. on second base. 216 <laughs> is the number to call. Jim Ingram is here. Uh, normally, Jim, uh, one of the great baseball analysts here in Northeast Ohio, but I don't think there's much to talk about. No, and uh, yeah, I mean, that, that's... Uh, that, that was one of the, I don't know what was more shocking, that they lost or how they lost. I mean, you, you thought, I mean, I thought everyone, I think, probably thought there was a pretty good chance they were going to win the game. But, you know, lose a game where you have like 18 penalties and, and just like nothing went right after that first drive. Yeah. The, the Browns had 18 penalties, haven't had that many since the game in 1951. And by the way, they won that game. Which is amazing. Yeah. I'd like to see the film of that game. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they didn't have film yet. Yeah, since yeah. So we'll just take it at a second-hand hearsay. How as a fan, here, here you go. This is the Titans versus the Browns yesterday. Uh, passing yards, 216 for um, uh, Mariota, 244 for Baker Mayfield. Rushing yards, 123 to 102. When, when you just look at, at these numbers, if you try to analyze the game or figure out what happened when you didn't see the game, until you get to the bottom with the penalties, it's about an, it looks like about you know a twenty-one to seventeen game. Yeah, yeah, it does. It, although you know when you get to the bottom, you see that not just the eighteen penalties, but the hundred and eighty-two yards. And right. they had almost twice as many penalty yards as rushing yards. Yeah, you'd be happy with one hundred eighty passing yards in the first half. I yeah, would think. yeah. I mean, it, it got comical after a while. I mean, like every single play, there, there was like. How much, well, a penalty. as a fan, and I, I saw you in the press box, I was there for a while, and then I went out, out into the stands uh, to, to uh, some people who had some tickets. And to me as a fan, and I can only imagine what it's like as a player, when Seibert missed that extra point, it's like the balloon, the air in the balloon came out. It, it shouldn't have. They're still up six. 
But when they, they pushed down the field uh, just nonstop, the, the, the momentum was taken away on the missed extra point, I think. Well, I don't know if I would say that as much as I think that first drive was just so easy and so spectacular that they it was almost like the, the players thought, well, we're really as good as we think we are, and this is just going to be a cakewalk. Right. And then the rest of the game, it was anything but a cakewalk. Yeah. This segment of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by the Ohio Lottery. All right. The cyber misses the extra point, which which is almost, I don't know, I, want to say, I don't want to say it was expected because the, there was so much emphasis on who was going to get the job and the fact that he was the guy who was drafted. But it's almost like everybody's fears came to life at that point. Well, it was a reminder that, that you, you, we've got two kickers this year and, you know, there's, we're going to have this great team supposedly and two rookie kickers, which doesn't happen a lot for, for teams in any state of rebuilding. And then to miss your first extra point when you're, you know, a kicker trying to prove that you belong is not a real good start. Maybe Gilbert wasn't, it wasn't that far away. They can just call him on the phone and say, come on down, in the, you'll start kicking in the second half. <laughs> Where are you? Are you in the facility? <laughs> hey, we made a mistake. We're not upset anymore. <laughs> Unbelievable. Also, Baker Mayfield unlikely threw for three interceptions. Whose fault was that? Well, I I, I don't know. I mean, a couple of them were, were really bad ones. Uh, there might have been one that was not so bad, but yeah, I mean, he was as part of the, you know the biggest part of the problem is, is others. And I, I will say though that you know he was running for his life for most of the right. the, the, the the game, and just just I, I, the contrast between that first drive when it looked like there was almost no defense out right. there. And then the re whole rest of the game was like two different teams. And I, I just think they got, after the first drive, I think they really did buy in totally to the hype that we're really, really good and we can just do what we want. We'll still Freddie, win this game. Freddie Kitchens actually defended his uh, offensive lineman. He had the, the one case where they, a, a kick, which was denied by the player. Um, can't... I mean, that's, that's ludicrous to deny it. It was clear what he did. Yeah, but it, it started off a chain reaction. Uh, the re and then Lamb gets hurt. He's only in three or four plays. And uh, you're up to seven linemen being used. And that, that's not good. Yeah. I mean, you went into the game knowing your, your offensive line was <clears throat> probably going to be the, the biggest question mark going into the season. Right. And then you start getting one of them gets thrown out and another one gets injured. And so a thin line is even thinner still. And from that point on, it was pretty much just every man for himself on offense. Let's take a look at what some of the fans feel about what was the most, uh, what scares you the most about the Cleveland Browns after yesterday's loss. Larry Pantage says, I love the question because it frames last, it frames a week with a long-term outlook. Got to say the offensive line's problems, the group holds the quarterback's health and the running game success in their hands, but they hold, if they hold it the wrong way, penalties get, penalties get called and the players get hurt. Gary Halloway. Once again, not playing uh, like they were prepared to start the season. No opening season win at home for 15 years. Where is our dominant defense? Aaron Wood says, what scares me most less is the offensive line and all the penalties. 18 is way too many, and uh, they need to make sure that it's corrected for Monday night's game against the Jets. Carolyn Watkins says, the lack of discipline and the offensive line. There is no excuse for many of the penalties, unsportsmanlike conduct, roughing the passer, etc. Freddie uh, Kitchen, uh, Kitchens ought to get them under control, and Dan Macy that they should have kept Forrest Greg, er, uh, <laughs> Greg uh, Williams as coach. It would be tough to get Forrest Greg back from where he is right now. 216-575-0403 is the number to call. Uh, we're going to check uh, what Freddie Kitchens talked about. He pretty much said exactly what you would expect him to say. but Yeah, and it's all you can say yeah. uh, on a debacle like that. I mean, you can't sugarcoat anything, and he didn't. No, and you say, okay, next week it's a new season. Get get started. So uh, we'll see what happens on that. Uh, let's uh, remind you the Ohio Lottery uh, uh, places to go. Uh, did you know the, over 130,000 winners on pick games each month? Try pick three, pick four, or pick six to win. Up to, up to $500, $5,000, or even $50,000. That's twice a day from the Ohio Lottery. You can also check us out on Facebook.com slash More Sports and Less Levine with new content posted each and every day. It's good to see some new names coming in. We'll take a break. Jim Ingram is with us. More Sports and Less Levine comes your way exclusively on Cleveland.com. Downtown Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area only at Presque Isle Downtown Casino.
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. All right, what we have to refrain from doing right now is overreacting. It's uh, one game in a 16-game schedule. Uh, we're very disappointed in uh, the lack of discipline that we showed, uh, the loss of composure that we showed at times, and uh, just overall not doing a good enough job uh, from a coaching perspective and a player perspective to get the job done in a positive manner. Um, the atmosphere was incredible uh, for that game, for an opening game, uh, a day game, all those sort of things. Um, really have never been in that type of atmosphere before. And that's a testament to our fans. Um, we're going to continue to make corrections uh, in how we prepared uh, from a discipline standpoint uh, and a lack of composure standpoint. I think that put us in some bad situations that we weren't able to overcome enough of those situations and put us behind uh, in the game and ultimately out of reach because of those things. So uh, we will get better next week and uh, we'll see where we're at. Uh, how do I avoid the overreaction? Um, the overreaction, uh, we've, we've preached from the very, very beginning about not uh, blocking out the outside noise and uh, we've got to continue to do that and uh, recognize the problem, and then rec rectify the problem. Uh, we talk all the time, all throughout training camp, they were put in situations where problems arose. Uh, so we identify those problems, then we rectify those problems. That's how you get better as a football team. And I fully expect that we have the men in the locker room that's going to do that. What are, the rec what are the corrections that you can make during the week to improve the discipline you said you were looking for? Well, a lot of it was uh, losing composure uh, at times. Uh, technique causes you to be in bad positions to commit penalties. So we need to continue to work our technique in the back end of things on defense. Um, and up front, it's about uh, maintaining your composure and playing, being a smarter football team. We understand that problem and uh, we'll work on fixing that problem. This portion of More Sports and Less Levine brought to you by Northeast Factory, direct with three great locations, uh, east, west, and now south in Macedonia. Jim Ingram is here tonight. All right, Jim, you heard what Freddie Kitchen said. You, you, you and I could have written down before he did whatever he said. We could have written what he was going to say. Right? Yeah. It's the coach's in, handbook. In a, dis, in, a, in a defeat this overwhelming, you've got in his position – no choice but to throw yourself at the mercy of the court. Just, <laughs> I'm guilty as charged of everything. Right. This is a horrendous start to the season. And, of course, you're going to say we're going to get better because you really you can't to. get any worse. All right, so you and I haven't had this chance to talk uh, about this. As you know, I am the expert at, uh, at clock management. I, right. I think you know that. Coming up at the end of the half, there was a, qu a play near the uh, sideline, and they stopped the clock to check it, and then they started it again, started the clock again. They could have put. They could have had two more plays around midfield to get into scoring position if they called one, used one of their timeouts. Well, yeah, that's true, but that would have been a chance for two more penalties. So I don't know if you really want <laughs> or any, three any more. Yeah, any more plays than they they were yeah. allotted in well, that game. Well, he made a good point. They were only down by nine, and they were as the third as the third quarter came to an end. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then they ran that that long. Well, that that long screen pass that. After the Browns cut it to two, I think seventy-five it was. yards. Yeah, and it didn't look like anyone even touched him. Like like the Browns had never seen a screen pass before. <laughs> so th well, th there was th this team hasn't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was just like across the board. There's not one thing you could say that well. Well, that was pretty good. I no, mean, but didn't you get the feeling when they marched the ball right down the field, and it looked to me like they were going to be nonstop. Uh, it did. Unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah that first series. It was like they thought that, well, now we're going to the Super Bowl because we scored right. on our first possession. And All right, so the Browns lose. Pittsburgh loses, same same amount, 30 points. Cincinnati, 
What did they? They, uh, they, they uh, lost. They lost also. Yeah. And then uh, Baltimore looked terrific. Apparently. Yeah, they won by forty nine. Yeah, How about that. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah, so there was a extreme scores in the d uh, division. So it's uh, heading toward the second game. Is it too early to? Should we uh, panic yet, or is it uh, too early to be well, uh, concerned? I would say panic, but you know this is no cakewalk. Uh, you going into New York, it's the Jets, but you know you're playing on Monday night and coming off the the, the, the debacle they just came off of. Uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that needs to be cleaned up and improved upon. And you know, fortunately, I guess they get another extra day or two to prepare for their next game. Right, so so the the Browns, of course, uh, dealing with uh, Odell Beckham. They're going to New York, not not the Giants, as you just said, but, but the Jets. But the national spotlight is on them. Do you, you want some uh, ideas of what some of the national guys are saying? I got plenty. Oh, oh sure. Go ahead. All right. So Stephen A. Smith says uh, this about the Browns. Let me state for the record, Cleveland's a very talented team. I have no questions about the individual talent. What I did say is uh, second-year quarterback, first-year head coach. You haven't uh, been to the postseason yet since 2002, and uh, there you go. This is a man's game. That's some, some hidden points there. Max Kellerman says, uh, if you were complacent because you were reading your own press clippings, and uh, this will wake them up, up uh, this issue for me is this team is one thing, the head coach. It seems to be a theme that we're getting. It's an easy theme for them to do. Chris Carter, Hall of Famer now, says they're immature as a football team. You could see that with uh, the penalties. It shows that when you bring together a bunch of kids who have not won in the NFL and guys uh, from other teams who have not won either, they definitely didn't do well in the most important thing, which is the football game yesterday. Then we uh, finish it off with Shannon Sharp. Uh, we're talking about Odell Beckham. Why do you need a watch that costs three, uh, $350,000? Who uh, are you trying to impress? And let, let's say it was a, an endorsement. If that's the case, then uh, it shows that uh, where your head's at from minds uh, in the wrong place, from what I saw from this uh, ball club yesterday, they got a ways to go. I don't think anybody can argue with anything. No, no, I thought Chris Carter's was very well stated. And, and the, the watch thing, obviously, he got he probably got the watch for free by wearing sure. it on national, uh, national sure. television. Uh, so I, I'm not sure. <laughs> he had a, another appointment yesterday. Yeah, maybe at four, four o'clock. He, he didn't yeah. want to uh, miss. Well, he should go to the Northeast uh, Factory Direct, he, I, although he'd save way too much money. You know, if it's $350,000, he, he, he'll save a lot, but he'll probably pay more elsewhere. <laughs> well, that must be their, their, their football model. Watch, yeah, there, there you go. Alex buys in volume and he cuts out all the expensive overhead and he passes the savings on to you. He loads all of his high quality stuff into the old warehouse instead of a fancy retail store. His rent is about one tenth of what the big, uh, big furniture stores uh, ask for. And I'm telling you, Northeast Direct, uh, F Factory Direct is one place, it's not a fancy place at all, it's a warehouse, and that's why you save so much money. And that's uh, three locations, Northeast Factory Direct. Of course, uh, you got the old one that's uh, uh, at West 140th, uh, near the freeway. Then you have uh, uh, the old B&B Appliance on Lakeland Boulevard in Euclid, and now the new one, Macedonia, and that's uh, the old drive. It's a freeway drive, that's in Macedonia. But before you do anything, check out everything at Northeast Factory Direct. Dot com. Northfield Park, the place to go for live uh, harness racing, and they've got the live racing, and you see it there Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, but they're open early. Those 6, p 6 p.m. is the post time for the, the races, but they open early at uh, noon and sometimes earlier than that for all the great uh, horse racing uh, activity all over the world, right from Northfield Park where it's free admission, free parking every day. We're going to find out what Mike is thinking. Mike Massetta from uh, Nature Stone, we'll check with him. When we get back, Jim Ingram with us. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. Your product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty, moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's Promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. 
Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Check out Birthdays for the Day, which is September 9th, 2019. Uh, Frank Chance, born on that date. Dick LeBeau, is he still catching or uh, coaching? Uh, I don't believe so. I don't think so either. Johnny Robinson. Penny Loafers from uh, 1947. <laughs> Joe Theismann, uh, J.R. Smith, seen on the left. Uh, Joe was actually born Joe Theismann, but the Notre Dame PR people maybe paid him off to change it to Theismann, as in Heisman. Yeah, yeah, so they could promote it that way. Yeah. 216-575-0403. Here's a quickie. How come there are no hills in Cleveland Heights or Shaker Heights? The only guy who might know. Do you know the answer? I do not. All right, so let's bring in Mike Lucetta from Nature Zone. See, Mike, how are you? I'm doing well, Les. How are you? Hey, good. Any ch chance that you know why there are no hills or mountains in Shaker Heights or uh, Cleveland Heights? No, they're, they're all in seven hills, right? Oh, I hadn't... <laughs> 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 Excellent, thank you. You know, Jim, you remember when the Cavaliers came along in 1970? So yeah. a year before, Mike, you're way too young to know this, but uh, they had a contest to name the Cavaliers. So I wrote in what I thought was, was a terrific name. In retrospect, it was still a terrific name. The Cleveland Heights, H-I-T-E-S. Now, why is that not the name of the Cavaliers? H-I-T-E-S? Yeah. You know, you didn't, I didn't spell it the right way of heights, but I thought... I was shortening it before shortening became the popular thing to do. Well, I don't, I don't get. You don't get it, Mike. No. You, do you get it? H i t e s. H i t e s. No. No. Well, no wonder. <laughs> what do those people know about naming teams anyway? Two one six five seven five zero four zero three. All right, Mike. Uh, we know what uh, Jim uh, Jim Ingram is thinking. Uh, we know what I'm thinking. What the heck are you thinking after yesterday's de debacle? Well, I mean, you could go in so many directions, but I mean, it was it, obviously it was awful. Uh, the one benefit I had was my daughter had a soccer game, so I didn't get to see <laughs> most of the game. But I, I was I was watching it on on the the, the updates on my phone. Right. But yeah, I mean, the, the, the look, Freddie Kitchens. This is just my opinion. Freddie Kitchens is a first year head coach. He, he 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 came from. He basically was a running back coach, I believe, and then he worked his way up. You know, after Hugh got fired and and, and so forth. I, I don't know that he's ever even been a coordinator in in, in the NFL until and last now year. He takes, now he takes over the team as the head coach. There's going to be some growing pains. I mean, he's he has no experience as a head coach. Or I I and, and Jim can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe even as a coordinator you know, in, in, in the NFL. So, you know, while he, he, he may, there's, there's a lot more to being a head coach and, and, and running the entire team um, than there is to just coaching the running backs or coaching the tight ends or coaching the quarterback. Your answer about being a coordinator, he became the coordinator last year uh, when, yeah. when the, yeah. all those changes were made. What, what concerns me and you rarely see two, two linemen go out, one for kicking and the other with an injury. Lamb was injured. And as head coach, you have to figure out what to do that way as opposed to what play you're going to run next. I just, think it's, I just think that was a mistake from the beginning. And, it does, and, and I, I know somebody's going to get on me and say, I'm just joining the crowd here. I've said it from day one, and I don't know how he sold himself to, to, to be head, the head coach under John Dorsey. Uh, with with that question mark behind him, you if I remember correctly, you wanted Arians, and Ar Arians was close with Kitchens 
and you assume that he would make Kitchens his offensive coordinator. And well, I, yeah, and that I was one of, that one of my probably, choices. That probably was a, was a better choice for the short term. I, I don't know where Kitchens is going to lead him in the long term, but you know, he 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 again, you know, and and, and the 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 uh, um, Hugh Jackson proved, and, and a lot of uh, coaches have proved that the head coach offensive play caller doesn't really work well in the NFL because there's too much going on to also be in charge of calling the plays. I understand it. I get why he wants to do it. But you brought in an offensive coordinator who's supposed to be on the same page with you. You might as well turn those duties over to him, yeah. trust that he's going to do it right, and run your team. And yeah, Jim, let me ask Jim a question here. That you just brought up, you can manage those because you don't have to worry about calling the next series of plays. Right. Jim, are you, do you agree with me that he, he may want to talk to Baker Mayfield as, I mean, if he's the head, if he's the coordinator also, he wants, may want to talk to certain players about certain things that are happening, and yet some changes may be needed out there, and he's too busy fulfilling play-calling roles. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've always thought, I kind of agree with you, that there's only like two or three guys in the NFL that you've got to earn the right to be a head coach and an offensive right. coordinator because it's such a yeah. over overwhelming <clears throat> job for, for most guys that probably isn't suited for a rookie. But on the other hand, you know, we watched him after they made all the changes last year. He was basically the offensive coordinator and the head coach, and they played, you know, seven really good games after that uh, change was made. So, well, Greg Williams is the interim well, Greg, Yeah, Greg Williams is the coach. That's right. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, but but, but I mean, he showed enough. It seemed to me he showed enough to be on offense. On the other hand, I don't I don't want my head coach to be the offensive coordinator. Yeah, I right. mean, it's it's a tough job. There's no no doubt about it. And when games like this happen, it becomes pretty apparent that maybe there isn't the right way Mike, to go. just a, a quick word on the Indians. Took two out of three from Minnesota. That's not enough, I don't think, as far as the, uh, it, the title is concerned. But can they hang in there well enough to somehow find that wild card with about 22 games left? Oh, I, I, I definitely think so. They're, they're a game and a half back. Uh, Oakland plays tonight, and, and so do the Indians. It's, and Oakland's playing Houston. So if the Indians win, Oakland loses, I think they go to a virtual tie with that. And so that would be one of the wild card spots. But they're five and a half games back in the division. Pineda just got uh, uh, busted for, for uh, the drugs. So he's, he's going to be out. He's not going to be pitching for them. And that's a, that's a big loss to their rotation for the Twins is what I'm talking about. And, and uh, Max Kepler, I believe, got hurt. So, so they're, they're, they're top hitter in, Ke in, in Kepler. And Nelson Cruz is, is, is running on fumes right now. He's trying to get back from that, from that injury. And he's not playing a lot. I mean, they, there, there's still some time left where they can make a run. And they've got to win. They've got to win games. And, uh, you know, they did take two out of three. And that's about all you could ask for from them going into Minnesota and, uh, uh, you know, winning, winning two out of three games. Right. And now, you know, they got, they got to keep doing it. They have some bad losses that have really set them back a little bit. But I, I, I think that they're still in a position where they could definitely get a wild card spot and I think they can still make a run at the uh, the, the division title. It'll Jim McGrady disagree. I think they have a chance to get in you know, on either way. I, I'm very pessimistic about them catching and passing the Twins. I think they have a chance in the in the in the wild card race. Although Tampa Bay and Oakland are playing really well now, and the Indians are kind of not playing to that level. I don't think so. I'm I'm kind of leaning towards they're going to miss the playoffs yeah, completely. Me, me too. At this point, Mike, you have a final comment here. Besides telling me, wow, it's Nature Stone? <laughs> well, yeah, wow, wow was the same old Browns, I guess. No, hopefully, hopefully next Monday night we, we, get, uh, we, get, we get a good one against the Jets because that was a debacle. I, yeah, mean, that, I, I don't want to say. Know, I, I, I did I, take a loss, but that, that, was, that was bad. I don't want to say how, how important the game is, but very few, and I'm, I'm, not so, I'm not sure why this is, but very few teams who go on to wind up making the playoffs, and that doesn't seem right to me. Well, it seems more right than the teams that go two and zero make the playoffs. Yeah, but what if you go? What if you uh, if you lose if you lose next week, you're zero and two. The Browns would be, uh, and then they win the next week, they'd be one and three. So this week, if they if they win, they're one and one. Then they lose, they're one and two. So the the way they got to one and two doesn't seem to matter. Well, it doesn't yeah? I mean, it doesn't matter how you got to any point in your season, but when you start zero and two. <clears throat> and you figure you probably got to win what nine or ten games to get to the playoffs. Yeah, exactly. So now you've got you got fourteen less, games less left. chances. Yeah. I might. 
Have a great week. Thanks for joining us tonight. Hey, you guys do the same. Thanks for letting me talk. All right, Mike. Mike Pacetta, thanks. Right. Wow, it's Nature Stone. Uh, what is Mike? What's Mike thinking? And there you have it uh, from Nature Stone. Two one six five seven five zero four zero three is the number to call. The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame will have its big dinner next week, uh, and the public is invited. Otis Chapman, racquetball. Don Malloy from hockey. Tony Miller uh, from uh, uh, Villa Angela, St. Joe's, and of course, uh, a great basketball player. Tom Lucci is a tennis guy, and and uh, we continue on with a guy named Urban Meyer from uh, Geneva, or rather from uh, uh, Ashtabula, Ashtabula uh, which qualifies him for the Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame. And Rob Moss from golf, all will be there. Uh, and the dinner starts at 7.30. We're gonna broadcast our show from six until seven out at Lander Haven, and hopefully you'll join us for that, and then uh, join the, uh, the uh, great dinner. And you can get tickets at 216 and 241-1919, or admin at clevelandsportshall.com. Coming up, more of Freddie Kitchens and more of Jim Ingram. More Sports and Less Living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. As a kid growing up, my dream was to go to college, play baseball, and get a degree. Coming out of high school, I had two choices. I was accepted into a four-year university, but I decided to come to Tri-C after receiving a scholarship. I got my associate's degree at Tri-C. They transferred all my credits straight into Baldwin Wallace, so I started at Baldwin Wallace University as a junior. My name is Tyler Leonard, and I earned my first degree at Tri-C. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant, whatever it takes. And to keep your family comfortable, it takes Smiley One Heating and Cooling. Find them at 440-449-HEAT. We're not going to make excuses for our penalties. Uh, we chose to do the things that we did to create those penalties. Um, so we're not going to complain about the officiating. Um, you know, fans have every right to, to have their opinions. Uh, we're not going to create excuses for, for them. I was in Arizona whenever, uh, when I got there, they were four and, four and 12, five and 11. They were, you know, weren't very good. So we understand that you just have to play the game, all right, until you win some games. And then uh, questionable calls are questionable calls, and then hopefully they go your way sometimes. But um, from that standpoint, we're never going to make excuses about penalties and, and all that. And those guys try to do a good job of officiating the game. Um, you know, some of those penalties we had now were – uh, self-inflicted too so those are the ones that I care about those are the ones that are self-inflicted those that that are directly correlated to being undisciplined directly correlated to losing your composure those are the ones that hurt you it's not the uh, live action battlefield decisions per se uh, that they have to make and react um, it's those that you don't leave any room for error it's a penalty you know when you talk about um you answered Daryl's question about the second guy getting caught. I just remember in Indiana talking to you about that. How you were saying you didn't want your players to, to you know, take anything from anyone. Right. But obviously, you know, the second guy does get caught, and it seemed like with Miles Garrett and Greg Robinson, that was the case there. So did they just take that messaging and get carried away with it, or? Do you I think would hope. I would hope not, because I would hope that uh, we would play between the whistles, not after. Talked earlier about technique, causing some of the issues you had, especially with the penalties. 
is that some of it a product of these guys really, some of them playing together for the first time in, in, a, in a game situation? You know, um, I don't think so. I mean, they, you know, they, they need to play with good technique. They understand that. We need to do a better job of uh, teaching the technique. Uh, and we understand that. So uh, I fully expect it to be better moving forward. That's what the expectation is for us. Well, it's Freddie Kitchens keeping his composure so far, but it almost looks like if, if this goes on, it might not, it might get ugly. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, the one thing, the, the, the people that are, uh, and to his credit, he wasn't one of them saying, well, the referees are the reason. Right. You, give, you don't blame the referees when you have 18 penalties. Like you say, what if it hadn't been for the refs, we would only had 16. Like, <laughs> the, the, the refs had, you know. Well, no, they're the ones who called the 16 then. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, when you have that many penalties, it's like I think the the, the finger is squarely pointed at uh, the team, not the refs. No, no question about that. They were the most penalized team in week one, and uh, that may hold up for the season. For the yeah, Browns, yeah, anyway. they got a nice lead right out of the shoot. <laughs> <Right. so. laughs> no, no and then place. you know, then you get this reputation if it happens again, sure. once or two more times, then sure. you know, then they, then the refs are looking for and it. And if the if the head coach gets on the referee's case, which uh, uh, Kitchens didn't do, but if he does, yeah, the word gets out on that too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you've, we've seen examples of that. I mean, the Raiders for years have always been one of the most penalized teams. Right, the good news, if there is some good news out of this, is all the teams in the division had a play. And uh, three of them lost, including the Browns. You had uh, the Ravens winning big, the Bengals losing, and the Steelers losing last night. Let's take a look at it. The Ravens win 59-10. to Lamar Jackson, 17 for 20. I thought, thought he couldn't throw, Jim. Uh, Mark Ingram, 14 carries, 107 yards, had a couple of touchdowns. Time of possession, look at that. 40 minutes for uh, Baltimore and Miami with just 29. There was some, a report that a lot of the players begging down in, in, in uh, Milwaukee to uh, to try to get traded and get out of there. Seahawks win 21-20. They come from behind against uh, the Bengals. And Andy Dalton was 35 for 51, 418 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Bengals led 17-14 at the half. Joe Mixon left in the third period. No word on uh, what, what's going on with his ankle. Then you get uh, the Patriots winning last night, 33-3. Tom Brady, 24-36. Josh Gordon, three catches, 73 yards and a touchdown. Uh, most uh, yards, uh, total yards rather, Pittsburgh with 308 and New England 465 for that old man uh, being the quarterback. Old, old man, what's his name? Yeah. Old man, what's his name? Yeah. Tom Brady. Yeah, it's, it's almost redundant now. Every season they're like the team to beat. Like Right. And, and they, even with the, you throw any receivers out there and somehow they mesh with uh, Brady. Yeah, yeah that, the argument for how important are receivers in the NFL is New England. I mean, you, you see, like you said, year after year, they just seem to just gather up some receivers each year and Brady makes some stars and they but, keep winning. But he doesn't pick, they don't pick up guys like Gordon and uh, Brown. They pick up, yeah. you know, guys, they pick up guys at a different level and they're the ones who play. Yeah. But, you know, not every player that he's, that Belichick signs sticks, stays with him and plays very well. It just seems that way. Yeah. But, I mean, but they, you know, they're, they're able to, they're able to. I think what when with the 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 Antonio Brown thing, it's like they're signing him, and you know then the onus is on him to come in and fit in with right. them because you don't like they, it. They don't yeah. need him. Right. You know he needs them right now. Although you'd think he'd want to be with, <clears throat> excuse me, with Gruden out in in uh, Oakland, which will then become Las Vegas. Yeah, I mean, who knows what what he's thinking? I mean, he's it's it's almost like he's trying to start a. Uh, turn the NFL into the NBA where you try to make super teams. Well, yeah, but he had guaranteed $30 million, yeah. and he took half of that to go to New England for one yeah. year. I'd like to be his agent. That Drew Rosenhaus, who was a big-time agent, right. I mean, this, this is not one of his favorite uh, months. Probably not. Northeast Factory Direct, three great locations. They've got it east, west, as well as south. Uh, south, of course, is uh, Macedonia, and uh, it's just a, a great place. He it, it does a tremendous job, and it's not a place where you have to uh, join a club. You don't have to membership fees, and uh, the people are terrific. They're uh, not on commission. They'll help you if you want it, but the, they won't bother you. There's no pressure to buy, and they encourage you to check around, and uh, then eventually they think you're going to come back to Northeast Factory Direct. Same stuff you're going to see at the big box store, but he's going to pay about one-tenth of the rent that they pay, and he passes the savings on to you. Sokolowski's University Inn, the winner of the James Beard Foundation Award three years ago. That's only five restaurants in the whole country get that every year. What a 
What a, a great win that is for Mike and Bernie Sokolowski. And uh, they're the uh, oldest family-owned and operated restaurant located in Tremont, five minutes out of downtown. Take the Abbey Avenue exit. That's where you're going to find it. The, uh, since uh, 1923, when the grandparents started the whole thing. When we come back, we'll get the latest updates uh, on the Indians who take on the, Cal the uh, Los Angeles Angels tonight. Angels can't uh, get into the playoffs. The Indians still can. We'll see how that works when we get back. More sports and less living continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. company or product can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic nature stone floor. I had an epoxy-based sand paint on my floor that deteriorated, and that's why I called Nature Stone. Why paint? It's expensive, it's ugly, and it doesn't last. Nature Stone is always affordable. It's beautiful, and with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your garage floor again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. When it comes to selling you a mattress, most retailers are handing you a line, a long line of extra steps that drive up costs and create confusion. At the Original Mattress Factory, we simplify the mattress shopping experience by building mattresses and box springs in our own local factories and selling them direct to you. It's short, sweet, and simply makes sense. So experience more than just a mattress store. Experience an original, the Original Mattress Factory. Presque Downs and Casino now has sports betting. Use one of the 50 state-of-the-art Bet America kiosks to place your bet. Then watch your favorite games on our new HD televisions or visit our new sportsbook area. Only at Presque Isle Downs and Casino. Here you have um, what happened in history on this date, September 9th, 2018. Cleveland Browns, that's last year, the Cleveland Browns end their 17-game uh, losing streak with a 21-21 uh, tie versus the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers. Ah, the good old days, right? The good old days. It's a walk is as good as a hit, a tie in that case is as good as a, uh, a win. As, as good as a win. This is uh, actually um, yesterday also, a recent date in this history. And Les has been to a game uh, in downtown Cleveland every year since 1955. Somehow things, he thinks uh, things will change. Well, they didn't change yesterday. The Browns lose 43-13 in Jimmy Haslam with Jimmy Haslam's scoreboard shaped like his home state of Tennessee. How did the inspectors get get let that get by? I didn't even notice that. Is that Check right? it out next time. Wow. You, you know the state of uh, Arizona? Or, uh, Arizona. Tennessee. State of uh, Tennessee? Yeah. That's the scoreboard. Wow. Check it out. Well, I, I will now. Unless, yeah. unless they change it in the next two, two weeks, which I don't think they'll be able to do. Now let's take a look uh, at uh, Tri-C. Well, I'll get to them in a minute. We're going to take a look at the wild card standings, see what we're talking about as far as the Indians are concerned. Right now, Tampa Bay uh, leads it. They would have the home game if it ended it like that. They're up one game over Oakland, and Oakland uh, is, is up uh, a, a game and a half over the Cleveland Indians. Yeah, I mean, you've... The lost column is two. The lost column will count, so the Indians are two games behind both of those teams. Right. And what do they have, about 20 games left? Something like that, yeah. And uh, well, it's why pretty... why don't they figure it out? 115? And they've got nine of them against the Twins, Phillies, and Nationals. Ouch. They're all alive in the, the postseason race. Well, let's see who's pitching for the Indians as they take on the uh, Los Angeles Angels tonight. Here you got Shane Bieber against uh, Sandoval. Uh, Zach Plesak has struggled lately. He'll go against Jose Suarez, who uh, uh, has a record. Well, you can see it all right there in Game 3. Adam Plutko versus Dylan Peters. And uh, there you have it. They've actually, when you think about it, those kids have done a phenomenal job. Yeah. Not just being thrown into the major leagues, but being thrown mm -hmm. in with a team, going after the, the, <clears throat> the, world, the wild card and the pennant. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, w without those guys, this thing is over at the All Star break, basically. But right. uh, yeah, they, they've really done really done well to keep them in the race. If you're the Indi if you are the Indians, would you um, try to make a deal with uh, with Puig or, or somebody somebody like him is who they need? But is is he the is he the guy you'd really want? And would you go after him? Um, He's they, shown they, signs of all the stuff that they've told us about him. Yeah, including not running to first base. Not running to first base. Was, was really and throwing to the wrong base, just kind of heaving it into the infield. Yeah, he, you can tell. When you, I've never seen a player who, who every move he makes is designed to call attention to himself, <laughs> good or bad. Even a routine fly ball, same thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything, he really and, – and, you know, a lot of the things he does, they need, which is, you know, a power hitter, a guy that can drive in some runs. But boy, you talk about baggage. I mean, th th that thing the other night was just a, the blatant selfishness of him in the heat of a pennant race is, is, was astonishing to me. And, and, uh, and I, he's I lost think, his power. Yeah, he's lost his power, and I, I, I'd be stunned if they brought him back. The only way is if he gets no offers of consequence and they can get well, him for another year. Right now, yeah, what a one-year deal. One-year deal, yeah. Do, do you sense anybody wants him for more than that? I don't. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think so, no. I mean, th th those kinds of guys, older guys that are outfielders, uh, they're not getting big contracts anymore. No, those days, those days are gone. Um, Francisco Lindor, still. Well, if you had to put, it, if he was going to sign today with some other team, you got a number figure. Well, I think it starts at three hundred. Three hundred million. million. Yeah, and then probably, probably, probably more than Machado, but I would think less than Trout. You know, the four hundred. Oh, that's a that's a steal. That's a bargain. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, now next year, uh, uh, um, Lindor's in the same spot in his contract and, and th situation as, as Bauer was this year. So right. starting in the winter meetings this year, I think he's definitely on the table as a trade candidate. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to BP, who's in Pepper Pike. BP, how are you? No, I'm doing okay. How about you guys? Uh, not bad, not bad. What's on your mind tonight? Well, I was down at, um, unfortunately, I was at the uh, alleged Browns game yesterday. And in person and witness, you know, real big disappointment. I just, you know, that's why I figured I'd call you guys and, you know, sort of commiserate about the game. Yeah. What do you, do you think that's something that's going to be what this team is all about this year? Or do you think that's just one bad game? Let's move on. Well, like I was telling somebody before, I don't know when it was, about three or four years ago, the uh, Patriots lost to the Bills on opening day. And, you know, they were heavily favored. And, you know, but after that, you know, the Patriots went on and still were like 12 and four or something big, you know. What so, bothered you I, most? What bothered you most about what happened yesterday? Well, the penalties were really hard to bear, and also, you know, I thought the protection for Baker Mayfield was terrible. I mean, I, you know, played some quarterback back in the day, and you know, if you if you have guys in your face, you just can't do anything. It doesn't matter who your receivers are. You need time to evaluate, you know, the play, the field, and the, I mean, he just doesn't have enough. He was sacked five times and intercepted three times, so he's just not getting the right protection. So I do blame the offensive line. I think Greg Robinson, when he got kicked out of the game, that was a huge turning point. Yeah, then, then the, he got his the replacement who got hurt. Bodyguard is a left tackle. Yeah, and his replacement got hurt also. So now you're you're down way down past what you need on on the offensive line. Right. And a lot of things also, you know, Cameron Wake, who's a defensive lineman uh, for Tennessee, but for he cut his teeth with the Dolphins, and a lot of people didn't realize that he's on the Titans now. He really had a big impact on the game. Two and a half sacks. So. You know, a lot of people didn't really, maybe don't know who he is, but he's an elite pass rusher. So, do you see them? Was, do you see them? When uh, I saw that Derrick Henry, that Derrick Henry ran that that seventy-five yard touchdown came right into the end zone where I was sitting, right, right on the sideline where the, and, somebody should have been there to at least push him out. So, oh my uh, God! I mean, I couldn't believe this guy. He's like a truck. He's probably two hundred and sixty pounds, and how nobody got even a finger on him was really like terrible. So, yeah, he, just, he had a, he had an escort down the sideline. Nobody was going to get him. BP, yeah. we appreciate the call. We'll talk to you soon, okay? Take care, guys. Uh, by the way, I'll be on 92.3 The Fan this Friday, next Monday, a week from today, and the following Friday. So hopefully you'll tune in on that. Again, it's the next two Fridays plus the Monday that sneaks in. I'll be on from 10 until 2. In for Jeff Phelps on Baskin and Phelps. Explore your interests and find a program that puts you on the path to a bright future with Tri-C. You know, for more than 1,000 courses and over 140 career and technical program, uh, uh, programs, you can go to trisc.edu to find out more information. Northfield Park, your home for live and simulcast racing. They, of course, have uh, uh, racing 6 o'clock the start time. 
That's on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, but they open up the doors at noon for simulcast action all over the world. The top harness and uh, racing uh, venues will be there. A free admission, free parking every day at Northfield Park. We'll come back, we'll check some how come quickies and more about the Indians and the Browns. More sports and Les Levine continues exclusively on Cleveland.com. can match the features, benefits, and warranty of an authentic Nature Stone floor. We had a horrible storm that flooded our basement. We had to take out that nasty, moldy carpet. And we never want to have to go through that again. That's when we called Nature Stone. And with Russell's promise, our true unconditional warranty, you will never have to replace your basement flooring again. Get Nature Stone installed by the end of September and save up to half off. Schedule your free cost estimate easily online today at naturestone.com. It's not just a floor. Wow, it's Nature Stone. There are tastes we remember. Every smell brings the happiness of times gone by. Experience this every time you walk into Gallucci's Italian Foods. Whether you need lunch on the go, a catered party, or that perfect blend of wine, meats, and cheeses, Gallucci's has exactly what you're looking for. Straight from Mama's Kitchen. For old world traditions or original experiences. From the tastes you remember to new flavors you'll never forget. Gallucci's is a tasty branch of your family tree. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to OhioLottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students kindergarten through 12th grade can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Tomorrow night, Bud Shaw from WKYC.com will join us. You see us live from 6 until 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and uh, that's Monday through Friday. And uh, you can archive us uh, anytime. You can also find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash more sports and less living with new content posted each and every day. We also have the voicemail of truth and reason. You want to call when we're not here? Call anytime. Leave us a message, 216-200-6650. And uh, from anywhere in the world, you can contact us when the show is not on. Let's check out some emails, Jim. Uh, you can grade them if you want or just laugh hysterically. It's up to you. <laughs> I'll let you read. You're the All professional. All right, very good. This is from uh, Big Ed. Oh, okay. Big Ed says, no, that's not it. He sent this. The Big Ed is not the funny part of it. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> withhold my laugh then. All right. Uh, Big Ed says, how come you can get on a bus, train, and plane, but you get into a car? You don't get on a car. Well, you could get on a car. I suppose you could. Yeah, but Wouldn't you be can't advisable. get. Can't get on. A, well, yeah, you can. How come the professor? Are you a Gilligan's Island fan? I'm aware of it. How come the professor on Gilligan's Island could make a radio out of coconuts, but he couldn't fix the darn hole in the boat? <laughs> That's why the show's not on anymore. <laughs> they finally fixed it. <laughs> Paul Jacobson says, "Here's a how can quickie. How can two special team penalties on a punt?" It went out of bounds. How could that happen? Two referees <laughs> saw two different things. Exactly. Uh, how can there be two special? Oh, th that, that's Paul from Finley who wrote, sent that in. Now we have Mr. Gullible. How come I don't trust Adams because they make everything up? Adams who? I, I assume he means the scientific Adams. I don't know. Oh. How come claustrophobic people are more productive thinking outside the box? No, that, that's good. Yeah, yeah. And then we have the finale, who still is at the top of the list. That's uh, John Patrick. How come for my anniversary, my wife said, buy me something, buy something for the house, so I bought a round of drinks. <laughs> on, it's on the house. Yeah. yeah. But seriously, folks. <laughs> but, <laughs> be sure to tip your waiters and waitresses on the way out. Do you have anything you'd like to add that you haven't added in the first uh, I, most I of the part say, of the show? If you, if you want to defend the Brown in any way, I will say that, did you watch the Packers and Bears, the opening night game? Yes. That was almost unwatchable. Yeah. And, and, and I got the impression that neither of those teams used many of their starters throughout the exhibition season either. There's only a couple good, ga decent games the whole day. Yeah. 
despite the fact they set many of them up for rivalries and whatever, yeah. like like Green so Bay and Pittsburgh. I would and, presume and that Chicago. given their druthers, that the Browns would uh, would have used their 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 starters a little bit more than they did because it really looked for large chunks of that game yesterday that these guys hadn't played together much uh, in, during in game conditions. And they hadn't. So, you know, what kind of chemistry can you, you build team-wise? And, and they fended off the questions in the locker room about Jarvis Landry was asked if there's any possibility that not playing together in the exhibition games hurt them today or showed up today or mm. yesterday. And he, he got offended by the question. He says, you can't yeah. ask me that. What yeah. do you mean you can't ask me? It's well, a you're, legitimate you're, question. I mean, you know, to say anything but that criticizes the coach and the organization. True. So he's not going to say that. But, but I, you know, I think, you know, you don't got to play him every game, but you got to have, you know, give him a, a chunk of significant playing time, especially with all the new guys they got. And, you know, they're, they're trying to build a culture and a chemistry for these, these newcomers. And there was none. When you watch a game and there's 18 penalties, those are just a bunch of independent guys running around yeah. playing for themselves. And then you hear um, on Beckham, um, he says, well, I worked out or I had my own workout. That, that's not the same as being where the quarterback is. And I know they met in, California and they they practice out there. It's not yeah. it's not the same conditions. No, it's not. And and that's why I think this game against the Jets is more important than a normal second game of the season because they got a lot to make up for. Right. You know, even if they don't win, they've got to look like an organized team. At well, least. the good news is, if you're a Browns fan, a lot of other teams really weren't good yesterday. Yeah, yeah, they got a lot of company in the not very good bin right now. Right. All right that'll do it for us. You're going to stay up late and listen to the, or watch the tribe tonight. Yeah, yeah. I'll Check it out. Check, check it out. All right, very good. That'll do it for us. Thanks to the great Jim Ingram and Mike Bissett out at Nature Stone. We'll see you tomorrow with the, with uh, Bud Shaw from WKYC.com. Of all the shows I've ever done, this was the most recent. <laughs>